Welcome to our spring seller check-in. We're so pleased that you're joining us today. Thanks for being here. My name is Rebecca Michaels and I lead the U.S. seller community and engagement team. Now, what does that mean? That means my team is responsible for connecting with sellers like you across key channels um, for eBay, including seller events like this one today, the community, um, eBay for Business social channels, we have Facebook, we have YouTube, and then in-person meetings by and for the sellers. And you know, sometimes they should even show up on our podcasts. Now let's move to a little bit of housekeeping, housekeeping to kick things off. There are two um, functionalities at the bottom of the screen that you can use. One is chat and one is Q&A. Um, please use the chat to talk with each other, to talk with other sellers, to get to know each other, to comment on the content that you're seeing today. The Q&A is the right place to put questions that you have. We have teams from eBay here on hand to answer those questions in real time. And then once a question is answered, you'll find your answer in the response that's directly under the question. So again, you want to talk to each other, please use the chat. You want to talk to eBay and get an answer from eBay, please use that Q&A tab. And then finally, if you want to turn on captions for this event, you can do so by simply clicking on that CC button on the lower right of your screen. That'll open up a new frame where the captions will appear for you. And with that, let's jump into the agenda that you see here on your screen now. So I'm going to kick things off today with a brief overview of eBay company strategy for 2023. And then we'll welcome Adam Ireland, U.S. General Manager, to talk about uh, how some macro e-commerce trends um, are coming to life here at eBay um, and to connect the dots from the company strategy to those trends that we're seeing. And then Adam is going to stick around and chat with eBay seller Eddie Chung of Soul Stage. And then last week, we launched eBay's 2023 re-commerce report, and Renee Morin, Chief Sustainability, S Sustainability Officer, recorded a, a video update for us. And we're going to play that, and her team also on hand to answer any questions. And then we'll have a chance to play some trivia. You can win some prizes. And then for Q&A today, we're going to do something a little different. You know, usually we take questions that we've seen you ask during the event and we have those answered. But in this case, it, we made some updates uh, just yesterday, the day before, to the promoted listings program. And there's some questions floating around in the seller community. So we have invited um, a lot. As we have invited the ads team to both be here for the Q&A, but also um, we have someone from the ads team here to answer a few Q&A questions at the end of the event. Um, so please also use the Q&A uh, to ask your promoted listing questions during the event. And then we have a few prepared questions, ones that we saw lots of people asking across the seller community, and we'll get those answered for you at the end. Okay. And then what we're going to do is <clears throat> excuse me, have a five-minute break while we transition into breakout rooms. We have four great topics for you to choose from today. So, you know, if you can't decide which breakout to attend, we're going to post almost everything on our eBay for Business YouTube and Facebook page in a few days. In our first breakout room, eBay teams are going to discuss myths and, and uh, around listings and how to deliver great customer service. In the second breakout room, we'll have a panel of eBay sneakers team discussing the business and new products. And then in line with the topic today of re-commerce, the third breakout room is going to have a member of the sustainability team and one of our 2022 up and running grantees talking all about her eBay business, clothing sourcing and sustainability. And then lastly, we have the shipping team here today to answer all of your questions on eBay's new international shipping program. And then, oh my gosh, we've got so much going on today. Following the breakouts, please stick around. We're gonna have 10 networking rooms. Those are hosted by sellers for sellers. Some room, rooms are more regionally focused. Others are topics that are important to you as sellers. So please stick around, check them out and get to know some of your fellow so sellers. Oh, we have a lot to cover today. So without further ado, we uh, are gonna dive right into my opening section, which is all about eBay's 2023 strategy. All right. So as eBay sellers, you're our partners. We don't compete with your business. When you win, we win. These are mantras that we repeat because they're very true. And I wanted to kick us off today by sharing eBay's company strategy that our CEO, Jamie Iannone, has championed and share some of those results. 
we believe very strongly in transparency with our partners, you guys. And we want to walk you through some of those strategic priorities that you'll see us uh, making as a company over the coming year. For example, you'll see why you're seeing ads for eBay Motors specifically or eBay Live events for trading cards and handbags. Because of our sneaker, sneaker breakout panel today to celebrate the upcoming International Shoe Day, we have a number of sneaker sellers here, so welcome. But also so many of you sell in other categories like fashion or collectibles. And we, what we want to do is show you how our company strategy around enthusiast buyers impact buyer behavior in all categories and, and why it's important to you no matter what category you sell on on eBay. Now, for some of you, you've been selling on eBay for most of our 28 year history. You know everything there is to know about selling on eBay. You are probably running one of the breakout rooms that we're going to have later. Um, and you know that many things about eBay have altered over those years. The way the website looks, the functionality, the way buyers pay, the logo. <laughs> But one thing hasn't changed, is, which is that eBay connects millions of buyers and sellers globally. And in all of our major categories, eBay, you know, it's been the place for enthusiasts to come together. I mean, from all the way back to the Beanie Babies craze back in the 90s, um, we created the secondary market for sneakers. And we've always have been all about connecting people around their passions. And we are and will stay a community of enthusiasts. And so our strategy has been to focus on building great experiences for these enthusiast buyers and experiences that bring satisfied customers to our marketplace. Now, compared to Q4 of 2019, 2022's customer satisfaction numbers have risen significantly. The strategy is working. We're seeing happy customers spending more all across the site. Enthusiast buyers are defined as those that purchase at least six times a year and spend $800 across the site annually. And in fact, the average enthusiast buyer shops with us more than 30 days per year. So as you can see, it's a really active group of loyal buyers. So let me share a little bit more about this group's shopping habits. Of our 134 million buyers, 16 million of them are enthusiasts. And these enthusiast buyers drive the vast majority or approximately 70% of GMV, gross merchandising value. On average, they also spend um, approximately $3,000 per year. That was in 2022. And we're seeing the benefit of cross-category shopping as enthusiasts are spending across all categories on the site, not just the ones we talk about a lot, sneakers, motors, trading cards. But you know, the average luxury watch buyer in the US who um, went ahead and purchased a $2,000 watch, then goes and spends $5,000 in watches and $5,000 on more than 50 items in other categories. Sneakers buyer, if the sneakers buyer purchased a $100 pair of sneakers, they go on to spend another $450 in sneakers and 1900 in other categories. These are really powerful things. A happy buyer comes to the site, spends more. And so from these habits, we can see how passionate our customers are about their collections, about the things that they love, and how they discover other items that maybe they didn't know they needed when they first started looking for a sneaker. Once they're on the site, they discover that there's so much more to shop for on eBay. Okay, so that's kind of the background and the framing. So our enth enthusiast buyer strategy is twofold. We have to understand your buyers, we have to understand their needs, and we have to build experiences that your buyers will love. So first we have focus on particular categories, starting with the buyers. With our roots in the enthusiast communities, we started with luxury watches and expanded to sneakers. And we started by hiring new leaders here at eBay with deep expertise. and right here in the ebay community is where we looked we recruited entrepreneurs ceos of their own companies sellers just like you to help lead what we call our focus categories our experts who have grown up in these categories and work with dedicated teams uh, to help those help sellers build businesses that delight our customers and you're going to hear about more of that from the team members in the sneakers breakout and the goal of this is to determine what matters most to sellers and to your buyers. And for many of these categories, we wanted to increase trust within both of those groups. 
So we launched Authenticity Guarantee. You've heard a lot about this probably. It's the official program that uses industry experts to vet and verify inventory. We started with luxury watches. We've expanded to additional categories like sneakers and handbags and jewelry and trading cards. And um, luxury watches over $2,000 and sneakers over $100 are sent to an eBay authentication center, inspected by an expert, and then shipped to the buyer. And I've been lucky enough, I actually visited one of these authentication centers once a, a few months ago. And the authenticators are dedicated sneaker enthusiasts. And it was really interesting watching them spend time with a sneaker, know the sneaker, and be part of that verification process. It was a, a really interesting thing to learn. And so what we've done by doing this and reboxing sneakers and other items and sending them on to the buyer is improving that user experience. We're authenticating items that are high passion and high value, and we're creating happy buyers who, again, then go and spend in other categories. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're also managing other parts of the experience, whether it's payments or shipping um, and helping out with returns between buyers and sellers as well. And all of these things mean that buyers can trust the products they're getting and sellers can avoid bad buyer behavior. So hopefully by now, the, you can envision where we're heading. The strategy started with sneakers, watches, and handbags and has expanded to cards, collectibles, parts, and accessories. And as we test and learn along the way, more categories have potential to see additional innovations. And through the, this current strategy, you know, it may not touch on directly on every seller's business or inventory. What it does is it reinforces eBay as a trusted marketplace and helps drive new business and customer loyalty. And we know we're seeing the, the proof that the current focus categories um, and having these enthusiasts, it's um, it, having an incredible impact site wide. And in fact, Enthusiast buyers, again, they spend outside of their passion category once we get them in the door. So eBay has a remarkable combination of inventory breadth, everything that you guys do to bring inventory to the site and the seller community of passionate um, enthusiasts around particular topics. Our platform, it goes beyond reviews and it brings people together who care a lot and who have interests that they want to connect about and, and share their passion on. You guys get information from each other. You want to share your expertise with each other. And it's really remarkable and unique to eBay. As these communities thrive on eBay, buyers are engaging with sellers. Sellers are engaging with buyers. And that's the key for our community. So now that I've taken you through eBay's strategy, we're going to look more into some macro consumer trends, how they come to life on eBay. and. Pass it over to Adam, who's going to take you through those trends to watch out for in 2023. Thanks. Thanks, Rebecca. Hello, sellers. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, I've got my friend Grogu over my shoulder here, other shoulder, uh, but uh, I haven't got around to the first episode of the new uh, season of Mandalorian, so no spoilers uh, in the chat there for me, please. Um, now, first off, just thank you uh, for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, we know you've all got uh, a ton on your plates running your businesses. Uh, so really do appreciate you taking the time out with us. Um, for returning guests, it's great to see you all again. Uh, but I understand we've also got quite a number of new faces in the audience. Uh, so great to have you here. Uh, and thanks for attending. Um, for those of you that don't know me or haven't had a chance to meet yet, uh, I'm Adam Ireland. I'm the general manager of our US business here at eBay. Uh, I've been about 11 years now here at eBay across various different parts of the business. I was in Europe for a little bit. Uh, here in the US, we now customer service team. Uh, operations, and more recently moved into this US general manager role. Um, but what really that means for me is just making sure that uh, the heart of that is about just being your representatives here in San Jose, and making sure that your views uh, and your needs are being met uh, by my colleagues across the company. Now, Rebecca did an amazing job uh, teeing up my section with her recap of our focus category strategy and the importance of those enthusiast buyers on our, on our platform. But as she mentioned, I'm here to sort of look a little bit more externally and talk about some of the consumer trends and expectations and preferences that we're seeing out in the market right now. Um, and obviously, we're doing our best as we sort of think about our marketing, our investments to kind of tap into those trends. Uh, but I know they're also really helpful for you in terms of how you're thinking about growing your business, sourcing new inventory, etc. So let's jump in. Um, well, 
really kind of if you step back a little bit, the key to many of the trends that we're seeing right now comes from sort of the roller coaster journey that we've all been on over the last few years. And obviously, it started out in 2020 with the pandemic. Uh, you remember that thing? Um, and, uh, and the explosion of e-commerce that we saw uh, with the launch of the, uh, of the pandemic. And then 21 rolled in and, uh, you know, we still have the pandemic in place, but really the way that we saw that flowing through was in supply chain issues. Shoppers were coming to sites like eBay to find those places, that, those items that were really missing from the local shelves. They weren't able to find the goods that they normally were expecting. Um, and that was clearly like a bit, another big shock to, shock to how all of us were living our lives. Uh, 22 uh, was not to be outdone, though. Um, and, you know, obviously, that's where we started to see inflation um, moving through into the economy, higher prices, for all sorts of goods uh, starting to come through. And what that really meant for the consumer was that that value became so much more important to them. And so in 22, you know, we saw many sort of consumers were shopping online to get the best price. And that became, you know, the, the top reason that we were seeing seller, uh, buyers buying online was that get the best price that they can. And so it was no longer about sort of getting the, you know, the gadget for your new hobby that you'd taken up at the start of the pandemic or being able to get hold of that sold out item, but getting the best bang for your buck and maximizing the value of, of all your purchases. Um, and coming out of that, what we saw was a real explosion in resale. Uh, and that's now become one of the fastest growing segments of the overall US retail economy. You know, it makes sense, right? It's a new way for people to tap into an additional source of income um, while it's also allowing the buyers to stretch the dollars in their wallets. So it creates this really nice flywheel. Um, online apparel, for an example, not just on eBay, but across the whole industry, hit almost $77 billion of resale last year. Um, and that's continued to expect, expected to continue to grow 16x the rate of non-resale over the next four years. And that's a trend that we're seeing continuing now into 2023. But there's, there's some quite interesting uh, stuff that we're seeing at the start of the year, and, and it's quite surprising to me, but consumer spending on retail actually began to rebound in January. And that snapped what we've seen as a cons fairly consistent decline through 2022. In fact, there was a study by PricewaterhouseCoopers recently, and uh, they revealed that 43% of consumers are planning to increase their spending in on online shopping in the next six months. Now, personally, I find that all kind of quite a little bit strange. Um, a lot of the economic data uh, shows we're not out of the woods yet. Cost of living still has a lot of pressures to it. People trying to make sure that they're still able to save a little bit of money. They're thinking about job security. They're thinking about the increased cost of mortgage or credit card debt. And when it comes to spending, they're looking for deals and they're looking for discounts. In other words, like people are remaining cautious and practical and they're trying to save on the essentials. But at the same time, we are really seeing that people are still figuring out ways to splurge on the things that truly matter to them. And that's obviously where eBay is really well positioned to shine. So if you've got a little bit of wiggle room in your, in your wallet, like we are seeing people still continue to splurge, but they're doing it, as I say, with that value mindset. Part of that then continues to extend that, that resale uh, proposition and making that more and more advantageous, more and more attractive. Um, and it's, you know, that's tied into the trends that we see from demographics as well. Uh, our own eBay data from 2021 showed that both Gen Z and millennials are leading that charge with 80% of Gen Z respondents and 78% millennials saying they've purchased pre-owned items now. But it's not just about those essentials. Buyers also know where eBay is the place that they can come and find either discounted vintage or unique products that they're not going to be able to get anywhere else. And we're just, Rebecca talked about with, uh, with the expansion of authenticity guarantee, it's also a place for those high ticket purchases, like in luxury. Uh, there was a recent Bain report that showed that uh, we saw luxury continuing to grow really strongly, 28% in 2022, reaching a $45 billion in, in industry globally. Um, but if you think about that balance of the consumer still looking to splurge, still wanting to be able to buy those nice things for themselves, um, and the trend around resale, this becomes sort of the sweet spot, being able to get into resale for some of these luxury items. Uh, and we can take a look at a little bit of what's trending. There's always some really interesting stuff here. Um, now, the reality is like the classics are the classics. Uh, so if you look at jewelry, which uh, we know joined the, the Authenticity Guarantee uh, family last year, the top brands on eBay still remain sort of the classics. So you've got your, your Tiffany, you've got your Gucci, you've got your Cartier. And similarly in watches, you know, very much the, 
the classic brands there continue to predominate. So you see your Rolexes, uh, your Breitlings, uh, your Targs, uh, and similarly in the handbags again, right? The ones that you'd recognize as Louis Vuitton, Prada, Chanel, Gucci, um, very much the favorites that continue to be there year in, year out. The Gucci is actually amazing to me. There was uh, a stat that I saw that on average uh, in North America, there's a search for Gucci handbags 49 times every minute, uh, which is uh, which is really remarkable to me. Um, but this this resale trend that we're seeing on eBay is, is an industry wide thing. And uh, that same Bain and company report that I mentioned um, showed that uh, now it's about 60 to 70 percent of the global luxury uh, watch market is now pre owned. Uh, so actually, a majority of that market is now uh, pre owned items. And then looking beyond uh, beyond luxury, we've also got, obviously got sneakers uh, and sneakers resale continues to, to, to be an area of strength. Uh, top top brands that you see on the marketplace, you know, the classics that you would expect, uh, you know, the Jordans, the Adidas, the Nikes. Um, but it's not just about those kind of like, you know, traditional kind of hype brands uh, or even the kind of the luxury ones, which we saw really popping recently as well in terms of Dior or Chanel. Um, but we're seeing new emerging play, uh, players in the space. So uh, slightly more attainable brands like Hoka, Salomon, Asics, uh, one of my favorites there, um, are all actually handling real resale and keeping resale value really, really well. And I think that sort of plays into the price points and the fact that people are looking maybe to be able to refresh their sneaker wardrobe in the same way that they always did, but without spending quite as much as they used to on some of those super high-end uh, you know, Jordan or Yeezy type brands. Um, so yeah, so lots of opportunities within that resale space, you know, go check out your closet, see what you've got in there that maybe you're not wearing anymore. Cause there's a lot of opportunity, uh, to be tapping into a, a real customer dynamic right now, uh, in this resale space. The other big tr uh, trend I wanted to touch on as well was just, uh, was trust. So obviously in a marketplace like ours, maintaining trust with both buyers and sellers is absolutely critical. Uh, there's some new research out from Adobe in their future of marketing research that talked about how 74% of consumers will actually stop purchasing from a brand or retailer that breaks their trust. And it's not really surprising, right? Um, and, you know, if I'm very, very honest, like there's a reality that eBay's ha eBay buyers haven't always felt that confidence and trust in the eBay platform. And that's really why we've been taking such big steps to prioritize trust over the last few years. Many of you are familiar with our Authenticity Guarantee program, which has really measurably grown trust in our luxury categories, watches, sneakers, handbags, fine jewelry, trading cards as well. But we've also increased trust in our refurbished offerings by introducing warranties and hassle-free returns. And that's attracting more and more brands and buyers to this category. And as Rebecca talked about, as we see buyers come in, have these great experiences, they come in and they're opening their wallets up over other categories as well. And so now we're also moving on to another category, which is motors. So in the wake of uh, kind of the supply chain challenges that we saw back in 2021, uh, we saw uh, new both new car prices and used car prices really increase. And as a result of that, we saw people flocking to online marketplaces like ours uh, for parts and accessories to be able to replay their cars. And in 2022, that actually led U.S. consumers spending $38 billion in total on online parts and accessories from eBay and other online marketplaces. Incredibly huge, huge market opportunity. Um, and, and, it, and this isn't going away. This is going to continue to grow. And there's a, there's a stat that really surprised me, but um, the average age of a car on the American roads today is actually 12.2 years. And that's an all time record high. And so as cars are staying on the road longer, they're going to be needing more and more parts to kind of keep themselves running. Uh, and again, you know, given macroeconomic uncertainty, it's going to make sense that people are, are wanting to keep their car running, they're wanting to be able to repair it, keep it going for a couple more years before they're able to, to maybe splurge on a, on a newer vehicle. And so as we, saw, as we saw this opportunity, we wanted to take a page from you, our Authenticity Guarantee Program, and we applied it to the motors, parts and accessories, or I'll refer to it as P&A often, uh, space and a few weeks ago we introduced guaranteed fit so that's ebay's promise that if a part is badged fits your vehicle it will actually be a fit between the vehicle and the new or used parts listing 
Now, for motors enthusiasts out there, this is going to be a real breakthrough in trust in P&A in the same way that Authenticity Guarantee was in some of the luxury spaces. eBay's got more than 500 million active P&A listings, and this really takes the guesswork out of buying the right part that will result in fewer returns. It builds trust and it builds satisfaction for your customers. There's other areas where we're trying to make sure we attack this trust issue as well, uh, so such as international sales. You'll often hear us talking to you, encouraging you to sell internationally, make sure you're reach, reaching that global, uh, global audience. But if we're going to do that, we have to give you reasons to trust that if you ship a sale outside of the US, you're absolutely protected. And that's why we've launched a major new shipping revamp around eBay international shipping. This is the new program that's going to succeed our legacy international shipping programs. So global shipping program like GSP and eBay international standard delivery. Um, and you're going to get those same sort of protections that you had with the old global shipping program. So you just get your package to the hub here in the US, and from there you're covered for any potential lost or damaged in transit issues. But we're going further than that as well. And on returns, eBay is now going to actually intermediate those international returns. The buyers will send the, the item back to eBay, we'll handle it, and we'll take care of the refund for you. Even more exciting, as we've started to move into this program, we've seen great customer satisfaction. And so on eBay international shipping transactions, we've already seen an 80% customer satisfaction rate, which is, which is just phenomenal for, for a new program. Now, the next, uh, the next trend that I'm going to hit on is, is, is a little bit obvious, really, right? It's, uh, but buyers are just continuing to choose platforms that make online shopping more enjoyable. It still matters to be able to really offer a great shopping experience. And this is especially the case for those younger buyers. So, you know, they're online, they're doing things like online gaming, and they want similar sort of experiences in the commerce space. They want the interactivity. They want to be able to click on the screen to make a purchase. They want to be able to chat with other users. Um, and they have to want to be able to ask questions as they're, as they're going by. And we've got a great user base here on eBay for this. Forrester actually surveyed nearly 12,000 online Gen Z adults in the US, and more than one out of three of them said they purchased from eBay in the last three months. And actually, amongst the online marketplaces that Forrester service, serve, surveyed, sorry, uh, eBay's ranked number one in Gen Z usage. Um, so that's fabulous that we're getting this, this young user base, um, but it's actually really important then that we continue to attract them, continue to get them coming back to eBay, because their buying power is going to continue to increase as they get older. Um, and for me, that's the core of why our eBay, eBay Live experience is so exciting. You're able to use the real-time video to allow the shoppers to replicate that in-person shopping experience, but doing it from the comfort of your home, with the phone, with that being the device that you know, you're sort of using in, in uh, interacting with the world via all the time. It's that really nice mix, right? You've got the streaming going on of it being live, you've got entertainment as well as just the shopping um, and the ability to make that instant purchase. And that's been really playing out across the industry. So there was some research by a company called Corsite Research, and they showed that actually conversion rates on live stream shopping are up to 30%, coming, approaching 30%, which is almost 10 times higher than you'll usually see in, uh, in conventional e-commerce. And this is causing an explosion in this live commerce space. So across all markets in the US, uh, we're expecting to see this grow from about 20 billion in revenue uh, in 2022 to up to $57 billion by 2025. Now, hopefully you, some of you have had a chance to join some of our early experiments in live commerce. Much of that was focused around collectibles. Um, we just had uh, National Pokemon Day uh, and one of the low Pokemon uh, focused live commerce experiences that we had just the other day I think we had more than 15,000 viewers watching that, interacting with our sellers. Um, but it's not just about a collectibles thing. And uh, I'm really excited that in the next segment, I'm going to be talking to one of our sneaker sellers, uh, Eddie Chung of Soul Stage. And we recent, recently partnered with Soul Stage to uh, produce our first sneakers live commerce event down in LA. Uh, amazingly, we sold, sold more than $130,000 worth of inventory over 282 items uh, during and after the event that day. And that included a $60,000 pair of sneakers. Uh, so, you know, talk about building trust, like the fact that people are able to see, ask questions, uh, really giving people another way to build trust in, uh, in the items that they're gonna buy. Uh, we've done 10 of these eBay Live events so far, but there's definitely gonna be more to come. I know many of you have actually uh, expressed interest in being able to take part in these eBay Live events. Uh, so 
If you are, please go and take a look at ebay.com slash ebay live. That's both got the upcoming events on there for if you're wanting to join along, but it also gives you the opportunity to register your interest and visit the sign up page uh, if you think that might be something that you'd be interested for for your business. So overall, I'm incredibly excited for, for 2023. Uh, you know, that macroeconomic uncertainty is still going to be there, uh, but I feel great about the roadmap that we've got uh, there ahead of us and for you. Our goal is pretty straightforward, really. It's more about how do we continue to unlock those growth opportunities for you? That's obviously never a straight line and the macroeconomics play into that. Um, and there's a lot of work that we need to do to do it, but I feel great about the progress so far. And I've never been more confident in that strategic vision that uh, Rebecca laid out at the, at the, at the start of the, the broadcast. We're gonna keep absolutely focused on what it's gonna take to create long-term value for you, our sellers, and how we build a better eBay. Things are moving fast, but with your partnership, we're setting eBay up really well for the future, but we couldn't be part, we couldn't be successful in it without you. So thank you for joining us today. As I say, really appreciate you taking the time out of your days. Thank you for everything that you do for your buyers. And thank you for your partnership and feedback. Uh, it makes so much, such a difference for us and it allows us to continue to get better. Now with that, uh, we'll move on to something that I've been looking forward to since uh, since I first heard, first heard about what we were going to be doing in this event. Uh, and that's a conversation with my friend, Eddie Chung, who's the VP at Soul Stage. So welcome, Eddie. Uh, it's great to have you here. Hi, Adam. Thank you for having me. Uh, no, this is brilliant. So I, I know when I first moved into this role, one of the things that was a priority for me was to make sure that I was getting a chance to connect with, uh, with the, our eBay sellers in lots of different forums. Uh, so some of that's meetups, some of that's just emails. Um, but I love that we're able to have a conversation like this uh, in this forum as well. Yeah. Um, now, Eddie, you can maybe tell us a little bit about it yourself, but like Soul Stage, high-end sneaker and, and streetwear reseller. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, we, um, we started off about 12 years ago, but um, the first platform that, that, that we use for online shopping is definitely uh, with you guys, eBay. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yep. Now, recently, I think you've started to get engaged more with the kind of overall eBay community, haven't you? Right. Um, and uh, I think like that actually started out with our eBay Open last fall. Uh, and we you know, asked you to actually come up here to San Jose had a few things that were going on. I think you know, right. it was basically a week we were sort of asking you to sort of step away from your business, which um, that's a pretty big ask. So I'm sure you kind of like felt a little bit apprehensive about that. Um, but tell us about that experience and, and, and how that worked out for you. Yeah, um, uh, with the position that I'm in, uh, I, I am a person that wears many, many hats. So in, uh, in order for me to leave for a couple of days, uh, being a father and a husband and son, uh, you know, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy. But um, my, my assistant uh, was able to, to push, you know, just, just take a couple of days off, um, uh, see what this is. And if you don't like it, you can always uh, come home early, right? Uh, and same thing goes with my wife. So, um, yeah, I, I took a couple of days off. And originally, I wanted to just kind of, you know, just have a vacation, right? Just to see what, what this is about, uh, um, meeting some um, uh, new friends and, and, and see what this can uh, uh, um, come off. So um, uh, I remember uh, how nerve wracking it was, you know, to, to film in front of all these cameras and how many people was, was working in the backstage. Um, but after all that, um, it, it's funny because one of the seller, uh, Ken, uh, just, just rushed really, really uh, 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 in, in a friendly manner. <laughs> To, to come to me and said, hey, uh, you're Eddie, right? You, you know, from Soul Stage. And I said, yeah, um, hey, what's, what's up? You know, uh, nice shoes. And, and we started kicking it off. And next thing you know, um, I'm meeting more and more different sellers. Uh, um, speaking with them was, was um, eye-opening for me because it kind of reminded me of how I started um, selling something that I'm passionate about, which, which was sneakers. Um, and... Um, Speaking with them kind of reminded me uh, like almost 20 years ago on my first pair of, of how I waited in line and how I um, was so anxious to, to purchase the pair that I really wanted. So, um, yeah, I, I really I'm really thankful that, that you guys are able to invite me to eBay Open and I uh, can't wait to see more of it. That's awesome. Um, so it sounds like kind of like reconnected you with your roots in, in the yeah. community a little bit. Yeah. That's correct. That's correct. 
Um, well, I know you and I then actually got the chance to uh, connect down in LA at the the live portion of eBay Open as well. That's right. Um, and I, I think similar to you, like, you know, it's sort of, I, I was relatively new in the role there and I was sort of nervous showing up, but the, yeah. uh, the friendliness, the community, like the true meaning of community just shines through always. Right. Um, and I'd love the fact that, you know, we had a you know, pretty large seller like yourself there, able to connect with, with new sellers, smaller sellers, um, and the opportunity to, uh, uh, to really make, make new connections in that way. With a, with a particular, you know, have you, have you been able to sort of like support some other sellers that you've met with as well as, as you've been able to sort of, you know, learn and, and pass on some of the benefits of your journey? Yeah, I remember um, one of the seller came up to me and just kind of like asked me like, oh, how did you grow from, um, from selling from a garage to an actual smaller warehouse space into where I'm at today? Um, we, so we shared a lot of um, uh, struggles on, on the the how scary it is to, to, you know, lease your first small warehouse and, and how cost effective everything is supposed to be, how to strategize an entire business. So we, we share a lot of common um, uh, struggles uh, and um, we exchange numbers and we still talk uh, until, until today. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Well, you know, really appreciate, you know, your willingness to engage with the community. It's great to hear that, like, you're getting things back from that as well, as well as being able to, to kind of share with, with some of the, uh, the up and coming sellers. Yes. Um, so obviously, that's kind of like the eBay community. And it's fabulous to have you part of that. Talk to us a little bit about kind of like the, the broader seller community, the sneakers seller community as well. Obviously, like sneakers is a really kind of tight knit community. Um, and you know, one of the think the things that um, that we at eBay have been very keen on over the last few years has been making sure that we're kind of being very authentic and connecting with those um, category communities in in the right way. Um, how are we doing with that? Sort of maybe talk to us a little bit about kind of like you know your views on on the sneaker community and like ways in which uh, eBay is able to engage uh, effectively there. One one thing that that um, uh, really brought me back to. Is that exactly the the, the wear them out? Um, the, to be able to see the the line, I remember uh, driving um, to uh, to the store, and and me and uh, the CEO was talking about wow, all these people. I, I think it turned out to be about six or seven hundred people is waiting online to see what is the you know what what's eBay doing with Soul Stage? Um, uh, what are they what are they selling? What are the the products are like? Um, but it, it was it, it was amazing to to kind of relive that moment on how we first originally started our passion, uh, how you know it, it's how we used to just go to different outlets, just waiting in line for hours at a time just to just to grab the the, the cheapest products so that we can post it online and sell in the store uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so so that was that was really cool. That's awesome. And for maybe people that didn't see it, could you just kind of give us a recap of what was happening there and why all those people were were lining up? So uh, there is a um, a campaign that that we collaborated. Uh, it's called Wear Em Out. Um, uh, as long as you're 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 wearing the sneakers that you have purchased out the door, um, you were able to get a, a pretty heavy uh, discount. So with with that uh, marketing campaign, it drove a lot of. Um, we call this hype, right? Uh, a, a lot of hype to, to people kept talking about. It. I, I remember we were trending on on Twitter, um, and also a lot of people were tagging us on on social media, uh, talking about you know how different this is compared to um, just your regular online um, releases. So, yeah, it, it, again, it's it's this is a it was an, a very unique experience, uh, and I can't wait to um, uh, uh, show you guys more on this. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. And so, what else can eBay be doing, uh, Eddie? You know, for because again, the more that we as the pl can build the platform to, to tap into that kind of sneakers community, um, the more successful we'll be able to drive for, for sellers like yourself, but all the other sneaker sellers out there. Um, any other recommendations for how we make sure that kind of like eBay is front and and foremost as the as the sneaker platform that people are going to go to? Yeah, I think I think you mentioned a little earlier about uh, live commerce. Um, this is something that that um, because we do have different stores uh, in overseas and it's been a trend for a very, very long time. So I, I, it was it was very nice to see that um, Eva was able to to start a beta, a beta testing to see what uh, live commerce can be like in, in the U.S. And um, like you were mentioning, we 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 really uh, knocked it out of the park 
Um, someone was able to, to purchase a $60,000 pair of shoes. Um, and the engagement was extremely high. Um, uh, the, the, uh, obviously, the products that we carry are, are, are um, uh, strategically um, placed. So I, I, I wanted, yeah, that, that should be something that, that is going to be uh, the future for, for, for SoulStage and obviously with eBay as well. That's awesome. Well, we're certainly very excited about uh, about what we're seeing with the live commerce experience, and uh, looking forward to continue to uh, to partner on yeah. more of uh, more of those more. experiences. It was, yeah, it was very fun. Uh, uh, you guys definitely helped so much in terms of uh, producing, you know, um, uh, strategizing, um, and the marketing campaign and everything else. It, it was uh, it was not easy, but it was very fun. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you, Eddie. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time out again to connect with the community. Um, we definitely appreciate it. Uh, we're actually, if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about Eddie's story, uh, he's going to be on our eBay for Business YouTube. Uh, I think going to be coming out March 15th, I believe. Um, and then also just sort of more broadly on sneakers, we are going to have um, a live demo from the product team on the unique new listing selling flow. Uh, and they'll be showing, selling broader tips as well in, uh, in one of the breakouts. Um, so with that, uh, thanks again, Eddie, and uh, so back over to Rebecca. Yep. Hi, that was great, Adam. Thank you. And thank you, Eddie, so much. Uh, really appreciate your time here. Now, I want to acknowledge, um, I was reading the chat during the uh, during the conversation, Adam, that you were having with Eddie. And I, you know, in fairness, I definitely saw some people saying, you know, well, everything's about sneakers. It's a sneaker specific event. You know, make it into a breakout, you know. There has been a lot about sneakers today and striking the right balance and making sure that the content is relevant to everyone's business is important to us. Um, I'll say we did especially invite some sneaker sellers to join us today. So that's why we had the conversation with Eddie and we have the, the breakout. But hopefully this next the strategy section at the beginning that I did and this next section is going to feel relevant to everyone's business. It's about um, the re-commerce report, which is fo focusing on sustainability and re-commerce. And so our chief sustainability officer, Renee, filmed this short video for you discussing some of the findings in that report. After the video, we'll have trivia and then the Q&A, which is all about promoted listings today. So with that, over to the video. Hi, I'm Renee Morin, eBay's Chief Sustainability Officer at eBay. eBay is the pioneer of e-commerce, or the selling and buying of pre-loved goods. And we recently published our third annual global e-commerce report. As eBay sellers, you probably won't be surprised to hear that we continue finding that e-commerce provides significant benefits for everyone who participates in the circular economy. E-commerce not only connects people around the world to create economic opportunity for all, it also helps keep products out of landfills and provides a more sustainable alternative to purchasing new items. Through e-commerce, we aim to create over $20 billion in positive economic impact and avoid over 7 million metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions by 2020, 20, by 2025. And at this point, we're well on our way to hitting that goal. In this year's report, we surveyed more than 11,000 of eBay's consumer to consumer, that's C to C, sellers in the US, UK, Canada, Europe, Australia, and Japan. Over 90% of our respondents participated in e-commerce last year including myself. I actually bought a pair of pre-loved shoes recently to go to my friend's wedding. It's an important cash stream for sellers with 42% saying they sell on eBay to make extra cash and 30% reporting that the economy has caused an increase in their eBay activity. E-commerce is also a more affordable way to buy than buying new. More than half of all buyers and over two thirds of Gen Z buyers in particular said finding financial savings was a reason for shopping e-commerce. And e-commerce thrives no matter the economic environment. Almost 80% of sellers report their selling on eBay has stayed the same or even increased over the last six months. E-commerce has significant economic benefits that we just chatted about, but increasingly people are turning to it for sustainability as well. And as a sustainability officer, this makes me particularly happy. The circular economy on eBay makes it simple to get things you love 
while helping the planet. In our 2022 Global Recommerce Report that we just launched, 93% of sellers, that's almost 100%, said sustainability was very or somewhat important to them. That motivation climbed to the number two spot from the previous year as a top factor that drives buyers to participate in e-commerce. As sustainability becomes increasingly important to sellers and buyers, eBay is making it easier than ever to keep pre-loved items out of landfills. 65% of sellers like you said that eBay makes sustainability equitable and attainable. Anybody can get online and participate in e-commerce. And that number jumps to over 70% of Gen Z sellers. These younger generations also rank sustainability higher. So this is more than just a trend. It's really a shift in the consumer landscape. With the addition of a refurbished program and our authenticity guarantee, we are working to give sellers and buyers peace of mind and create access to amazing brands at accessible prices. Our role in sustainability is important to us and central to this journey. eBay will continue to embrace sustainable business practices, creating opportunities and empowering people to make meaningful choices, realizing a prosperous world for all. Thank you much so much for having me here today. All right, great. So that was Renee, and I hope that that information on sustainability and e-commerce um, is interesting. And if you want to learn more, please visit the breakout in just a few when the main stage content ends. Now, before we head into the Q&A session, we're going to play a really fast game of eBay trivia and give out some prizes. And before we begin, I'm going to go through the rules. The first five correct answers will receive eBay swag. Other rules include no repeat winners and prizes are only available to residents in the United States. To ensure that your guess is counted, make sure that you're in the stage chat, not the reception chat or in the Q&A. So click on stage and then click on chat. Winners will be contacted next week via the email you entered when you registered for this event. And if uh, like me, you're one of those people who doesn't type really fast and you're like, I never win anything, don't worry about it. If you don't end up winning today, you can also fill out the post event survey that will be sent to you. And the first 500 people to complete the survey will receive an eBay shipping supply pack. All right, and so with that, let's move on to the trivia. Ready? And let's go. All right, a jar of sand recently sold on eBay for almost $100,000. Name the athlete whose retirement video sparked the bidding war for this jar of sand. Give it just a second. All right, lots of people. And let's click to the answer. That's right, it's Tom Brady. All right, congratulations to the first five people who answered correctly. Let's move on. Blue Ribbon Sports was the original name of which sneaker brand? Again, we're gonna give it just a moment. I don't know, is this a deep cut or is this something that everybody knows? All right, let's move on to the answer. And the answer for that is Nike. Blue Ribbon Sports became Nike. All right, moving on to the next question. A couple is traveling the world in an item purchased from eBay to set the Guinness World Record. What? was the purchased item. Oh, I don't even know the answer to this. I can't wait until we click. All right, guess is going in. All right, everyone guess. And let's go to the next. It is an ambulance. <laughs> I saw a lot of people guessing RV. That's what I would have guessed as well. Okay, one more. A 10 year old, ready? Yeah, a 10 year old schoolboy is selling empty energy drink bottles of what brand on eBay? All right, let's check it out. I don't know the answer to this one. It, the brand is Prime. Certain irony there. Um, <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know if I've ever tried that energy drink. Apparently, it's a brand. Okay, let's go on. The next one is. Oh, we should all know this. What does dead stock mean? Um, are ready? Ready? Everyone know what this means? And on to the next. New, the answer here is new, which is different to death pile. <laughs> now, what's the name of this? Ready for the next one? Here we go. What's the name of the character pictured in this 
Funko. I don't know. I'll tell you, though, his rug really ties the room together. <laughs> There, we'll take you know we'll take a couple of different answers. Let's see how we how we phrased it. The name of this character is the dude. <laughs> all right, just a couple more to go. Congratulations to all our winners so far. Again, you'll be contacted by email. Ready for the next one? What is N O R B? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I think that my um my uh background information is a little a little bit wrong uh, what is n-o-r-b an acronym for i wonder if this is a, a term that many people use let's see what let's see what we see how many people are going to get this right this is called a new or returning buyer that's right a buyer who is new or hasn't shopped for a while and has come back to, to buy from your store all right let's go on to the next one eBay recently announced a partnership with which soccer team? This is a soccer team not in the US as a hint. All right, ready? Let's go on. And the answer is Inter Milan. I don't watch soccer. I have to confess it. I don't know. Maybe Adam does because he's from the UK. Maybe some of you out there do as well. And so that's the end of the game. Again, congratulations to everybody who won. Thank you all so much for playing and for being in the chat. And with that, we're gonna move on to the Q&A. So we have um, an eBay employee named Jacob Hunter who is here, and he's going to talk about the promoted listing changes, and he's gonna answer a few of the questions that we have seen um, across all of our community. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Jacob. And then remember to stick around because after that, it's straight into those breakout rooms. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Rebecca, and uh, hello, everyone. It's uh, great to be here, and I'm excited for the opportunity to, to be part of this. Um, as Rebecca said, I'm Jacob Hunt, Jacob with the Ads team. Um, as you may have been aware, you know, eBay communicated out some upcoming changes for promoted listings this last week, uh, sorry, this week. And those changes, which are effective March 30th of 2023, include how we're going to define ad clicks, report sales, and charge for promoted listing campaigns. So let me walk through and here's what's changing. First, we are expanding with the definition of a click for both standard and advanced campaigns to include those interactions with new features and functionalities with your ads. Um, a good way to think of this is that you can include when a buyer not only just clicks on your listing as it already is, but if a buyer now clicks on the little heart um, icon that appears within search on a promoted listing, that'll be attributed as a click. Second, we are expanding what we qualify and report out as attributed sales. So for promoted listing standard to include when a buyer clicks on one of your standard ads and then purchases any item uh, within, uh, within the last 30 days. So this change will help give you a more complete view of your impact for your standard ad campaigns having on your sales. Previously, we had only reported a sale when it, and charged an ad fee if the same buyer had gone and clicked on your standard ad and then purchased that same item within 30 days. This was also known as a direct sale. Well, this model didn't account for when a buyer clicked on one of your standard ads and then ended up purchasing a different promoted item from you. So since the buyer originated from a standard ad and then went and purchased another promoted item in your collection, there's a broader effect that the standard ads have. We call this a halo item sale. New reporting is going to show you the wider impact of your advertising spend. Third, in anticipation for upcoming product launches, we've, cl we've clarified that certain account optimizations features may be, met, may be managed through your seller initiated account settings. While we do recognize the change is disruptive, the update is meant to provide you with a complete picture and the impact that the ads has been having on your approved promoted items on your selling, bringing interested buyers to your stores and collections. We all know you've got a lot of really great stuff to discover and we wanna help showcase that. I also wanted to take a second to address some questions that we've received from sellers in the community to help clarify any confusion. First question, 
if a buyer clicks on a promoted item before March 30th and then after March 30th um, purchases an item, will they be charged this Halo promoted ad fee? The answer to that's no. Promoted listings, Halo item sale changes is only applicable to clicks after March 30th of this year. It is not retroactive in any way. Any promoted listing standard clicks before March 30th will not be considered um, for this specific change. Direct sales will continue to be part of the program as always. Next question. How will sellers be charged for promoted listings? For promoted listing standard, if a seller clicks on a standard item and then purchases any of your promoted listing items within 30 days, it's considered a promoted sale and an ad fee will be charged. The ad fee for the Halo sale item will be calculated based on the ad rate in effect for the purchased item at the time of the sale. So let me give an example. I'm shopping on your, on your store and I see a promoted listing. Uh, we'll call this listing item A, and that has an ad rate of 8% against uh, uh, on that item. I click on it, and then I decide to shop through your store, and I find a second promoted item. We'll call this item B, which has a promoted listing rate of 3%. I go ahead and end up buying item B. Specifically in this scenario, you will be charged the ad rate for the second item, item B, that I went on to purchase and at that time had an ad rate of 3%. So you'd be charged that 3% ad rate. Hope that clarifies that. Question three, will sellers know which of their listings were sold as a direct or a halo sale? The answer is yes. Sellers will be able to distinguish which items were direct versus halo item sales using the transaction level reporting. Transaction um, sales reports are actually available inside of your advertising dashboard. We want, to, we want to highlight promoted listings standard will, will remain the trusted solution, helping sellers like you reach motivated buyers and across the eBay network, including through search and listing pages and all the great places that it demonstrates. And you will continue to only pay when it creates sales. The team published a number of FAQs on our blog at ebayads.com. The team actually is dropping in the chat right now a direct link inside of your chat box. We appreciate the questions and feedback, and we know that, and I just want you to know that the team is listening, and we really appreciate your time today on this. Thank you. Thanks so much for taking the time to be here, Jacob. Uh, so one question, hopefully you can answer on the fly, um, is can you clarify if an item is not at all in promoted listings and someone clicks from a promoted listing to go buy that item, will there be a charge on that? If it's never been hearted, never been promoted? Yeah, great question there, Rebecca. So if, if there is an item that is not part of advertising, it's always going to be separate. So in other words, there's no advertising fee that would happen if somebody clicked on a promoted item, went to your store, item that they clicked on secondly wasn't promoted, no fees. Only when it's attached to an advertising program will there be any applicable ad fees applied. Great question. Great. Thanks for clarifying that. I appreciate that. And then, um, so you mentioned there's FAQs on the eBay ads page. Um, if there's any more Q and A's out there, I'm sure there's a lot of questions. And I know PL promoted promoted listings is not for everybody, but thank you for taking the time to answer questions so that people can make the choice that's right for their business. So now we have seen one last question that I'd like to mention and just really quickly, cause we're right at time. Um, lots of questions about 1099 Ks. And I just wanna let everybody know they have been sent out to sellers at the address in your account. You can also access your 1099 K by going to the payments tab in seller hub. And there's a taxes link to the right. If, if you had a 1099 K generated, it will be there. So that's how you find it. So thank you everyone again for your time, for being here, um, for sharing the feedback and your questions and everything that uh, you've let us know in the chat and everything that you contributed in the Q&A. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next time.